much time gets spent on the money shot? <laughs> does he demand? Does he demand like two minutes of like you know tight choker coverage? Yeah, I mean at least it's my rider, yeah. and then I got the brown M and M's thing. So no processed cheese, right? <laughs> Hey everyone, thank you for joining us at the Chattanooga Film Festival 2016. I'm Bentley Little. Joining with me is screen legend Clint Howard. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, it, it, it's my pleasure, and I'm, I'm really glad I came to Chattanooga. It's, it's, so far, it's been a great festival, and it's a great town. Absolutely. Now, this is your first time attending the Chattanooga Film Festival. Uh, I know it's only been three years. Right. I mean, it would be kind of weird if I'd been here before, <laughs> but you know, never mind. Yeah. I, I mean, I know it's fairly early in it, but you know, you've seen the lineup, you see the events coming. Uh, are you excited about the uh, festival? Well, excited. You know what I like? I like that independent people and independent-minded people can can put something on that attracts a crowd and people appreciate it, and it hasn't been co-opted by corporations or, you know, the studios, mm -hmm. uh, that it's organic, mm -hmm. which like now, am I excited? Do I have a Woody? No, <laughs> no, but I appreciate it, and right. I'm, I'm glad that festivals like Chattanooga exist. Right. Now, what is it that uh, got you here? I know we're showing The Wraith, which is a classic uh, film that you're in. Uh, Classically what? <laughs> Would you? Maybe <laughs> infamous is a better infamous term? Infamous, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, Charlie and, and Randy mm -hmm. pre-jumping the fence. Um, <laughs> no, it, it, it was a great experience to work on The Wraith. Right. Um, how I got into the Chattanooga Fe Film Festival was very simple. Mm -hmm. Zach from Austin, Zach Carlson, who's a friend of the festival, He's been down programming festivals in Austin for a long time, and, and we know each other. And he sent me the best introductory email letter touting how good the Chattanooga Festival was, more importantly, how good the people were. And in all sincerity, it was a really great letter. And I read the letter, email, and I quickly hit reply, and I said, you know, I'm going to agree to be in this festival because of your letter. Your letter is the only reason why I'm coming. So if things go wrong, it's your fault. <laughs> so, but I know Zach, and he spoke so well mm -hmm. of the people here. And he was right. He's not lying. Mm -hmm. Zach's not a bullshitter, <laughs> you know. And, uh, you know, I love the independent nature of mm -hmm. this. And, and, and just the way people have that, 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 oh, I don't know, energy, excitement mm -hmm. for independent films. Right. Um, Hey, it's what I do for a living, so Absolutely. I like it. Now, The Wraith was picked uh, for you to be here with. Now, did Somebody had a print of it. I, the Wraith was picked. I've been in a lot of things. Right, yes. Yeah, I, I, I saw the filmography. It, it goes on and on. <laughs> I, have a tax, I have a tax return from 1961. You weren't that old at that point, were you? I was two. <laughs> and they taxed the crap out of me, too. I made $100 that year. Yeah. Charged an exorbitant amount of tax. What, 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 what project was that that you were? It was in? it was an episode of the Andy Griffith Show. Oh, okay, so, uh, you were uh, you you had a, a recurring role, a slight recurring role uh, on there, right? I think I did five episodes. Five episodes, and it was just it was an accident that I mean, of course, I was Ron's brother, right. but I was being brought to the set to just to be babys babysat right. because my dad had a job, so right. mom had to come down and watch Ron, and brought me, and I had my little play outfit on, which was a cowboy outfit, right? And the director saw me, Bob Sweeney, and just thought he could, he had a bit in his head that would kill. Mm -hmm. A funny laugh, they asked my parents, they said fine. And so I know, I know the bit, I've seen the shot, right. and it's a funny bit, and Bob Sweeney was right, and, and I've been getting laughs ever since. What, what's the bit? Well, it was a it was a dance. It mm -hmm. was a dance in Mayberry, and where the men and the women were having a little bit of problem getting along, and they were having this. It wasn't a square dance, but it was, a, you know, I don't know, it's like a square dance. And so everything's going great, and they pan the room, and everybody's having a good time, and then they pan, and they drop the camera, and it's this little two-year-old boy dressed in this cowboy outfit, just checking out the chicks and <laughs> smiling, and just like having the grandest time, and it's like a big laugh, and then. A father or some extra grabs me and pull, like hides my eyes like I've seen too much and pulls me away. Right. That was my first setup. I got a laugh the first nice. episode I did, the first thing I did. Right. Now, uh, I did some digging because you've been in pretty much everything. 
for <laughs> the past you know 40 50 years uh i came across something that i had no clue you were in the disney's uh, the jungle book yes you're right you're i met walt disney when i was doing the audio for jungle book right and you were you were the elephant right the baby elephant the baby elephant can you tell us about what it was like to be in one of the you know classic disney films and, and meeting walt disney I did a couple of voices for Walt Disney. Originally, I was Rue mm -hmm. in Winnie the Pooh. Right. And, and then later on, they were doing Jungle Book. And you know, back then, it used to take them years to do an animated thing. And I must have been about five years old when I did my Jungle Book thing. And it was, there was music involved, which made me petrified because I have no time or no rhythm. Right. I, I don't know what a note is. Right. And I was in a rock band. <laughs> typical but at the time the focus I was having to sing and staying in tempo we were recording at this at the main recording stage at Disney Studios and I saw this figure walk into the engineers room because there's that big glass you know the old school there's a glass between the engineers and the recording people and then there's a little piece of glass where there's the door you know and anyway, I see through the engineer's glass this figure, Walt Disney. And now I know who Walt Disney is. I'm a little kid, and I'm blown away. And then all of a sudden, I see his eyes peek through the little window of the door. And my God, he steps into the recording stage, and he says, you're doing a great job there, Clint. And he left. And that's a memory. It's, it, I've got a few memories in my Sorry. early years that I'll never, ever forget. It, and in fact, I'll never forget the spot I was at where I heard Walt Disney died. Right. So getting to meet Walt as briefly as I did right. was the highlight of working on Jungle Book. Absolutely. And now, and so your first role at two years old on Andy Griffith Show, within three years, you've already been working for Disney doing Winnie the Pooh and Jungle Book. How did you go from just randomly being put on set to getting to work on some of the biggest projects of the time. Well, now, now hold on. I, first of all, it was a little more than a three-year spread between between you know like my first appearance on the Andy Griffith Show mm -hmm. and then me working doing the voices for Disney. Mm -hmm. But I did. Wor I worked on The Fugitive. Mm -hmm. I worked on Bonanza. Mm -hmm. I worked on a couple of pilots for television shows. Um, what happens is, I was not intimidated by the process. See, I had a great. My dad is just a wonderful man, and he did a great job teaching, mentoring, but also I had a great example. I had a big brother, five years older than me. Think about it in sports terms. You know, I, I can do what he's doing. You know, for me, it was natural. Mm -hmm. If I'm watching my big brother do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. So I had no hesitation. Uh, my dad says, you know, I was so non, -re I, I was, was not reluctant. Right. To do anything they asked me to do. I mean, not the you know, exhibitionist or anything, but <laughs> if they wanted me to kick the guy, I'd kick the guy. Yeah. And the, the business liked that. And so I had an agent, and I started working. And when, when you know, the industry sees somebody that, that is effective, they want to hire him. Mm -hmm. So I started getting hired. Well, I started auditioning. Right. I auditioned. I still audition. Right. But like, I auditioned for Gentle Ben. I auditioned for Star Trek. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I auditioned for several of my brother's movies <laughs> until Backdraft. Right. When I did my scene with Robert De Niro, right. um, Ron's partner, Brian Grazer, went to Ron and goes, I don't think your brother really needs to audition anymore. <laughs> because uh, Brian was afraid that right. I might not be able to, to keep up with, with right. Bob and, and you know, Robert De Niro was the greatest acting partner I've ever had. Right. It was magical. Right. But the fact that I did it and the fact that Ron's partner said, I don't have to audition anymore. <laughs> now they, they make their movies over in Europe. Right. And they, they don't hire me. Right. But <laughs> fuck now, them. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, your brother obviously transitioned from in front of the camera to behind the camera. You've been acting for a, a number of years. I know you've picked up tricks and, and tips along the way. Have you ever thought about stepping behind the camera and directing a feature film or a documentary? Yes. I mean, documentary filmmaking, although I appreciate it, it's not something that really interests me. Right. Storytelling. And yet, um, I also know from firsthand experience how difficult it is. Mm -hmm. And I've had 
a really, really good director tell me that if you don't have a great story to tell, that really in your heart of hearts you want to tell, don't do it. It's not worth the aggravation. Mm -hmm. And I know where Ron's coming from when he says that. And I do. There are a couple of things that if I had the opportunity, I would like to direct. Mm -hmm. It's not going to kill me if I don't. Um, you know, I, first of all, I can't compete with Ron. I love my brother, and first of all, I'm not, there's no, you know, what am I gonna do, try to out direct my right. brother? No, no, I, I have some stories I'd like to tell, and I certainly feel like I could. The, the problem is, is I make a pretty good living as an actor, mm -hmm. and directing is damn aggravating. Right. And I've seen it, you know, there's about a six month period where a director only gets a few hours of sleep a night, right. and everybody's just going like this, just all day long, and it's just, you know, unless you've got the passion right. to tell the story that you want to tell, um, which is what Ron w you know, did. Right. I mean, you know, now Ron's in the business, but Ron started directing because he wanted to tell these stories. Mm -hmm. That's what we do is we tell stories. Right. As an actor, I'm part of the storytelling process. Um, when you're the director, you're kind of the main wheel. Right. And you know, maybe someday. Okay. Now switching gears a little bit, just talk about you as a person. I found out that you are big into World of Warcraft, is that right? That is absolutely the biggest fallacy of all time that, I'm, that I've ever played World of Warcraft. Really? Or I, yeah, it, it showed up in Wikipedia at one point. Somebody put in my Wikipedia page <laughs> that I am a World of Warcraft <laughs> like aficionado and I have nothing, You've I, never, I, I don't know. I, I've seen the game pieces right. and I know people that have done it, but this is when Wikipedia was just getting started, and they also, somebody claimed that I was an avid chinchilla breeder. <laughs> and which, and that I, think it's a, I think it's a pretty good idea, but I'm not. <laughs> I mean, the last time I checked, chinchillas are worth right. something, and if you could breed the little sons of bitches, it would be great. But <laughs> I'm not a chinchilla breeder, nor do I play World of Warcraft. Games. Any idea how, those rumor, how that rumor got started at all, either one of them? I don't know, it was a dare, or <laughs> somebody was trying to avoid jail time, or somebody created it. I, I, you know what, I actually did at one point, I contacted the Wikipedia people, and I had them remove the Warcraft yeah. uh, aspect, but I let, had them, I didn't say anything about the chinchilla breeding, <laughs> because I thought it was really cool. Right. And they removed the chinchilla breeding, I don't get it. <laughs> so anyway. Right. Now, I did hear that you are an avid golfer, though. Yes, I, yes. Uh, how long have you been playing golf? How, what got you into it? I'm a sp I, sports, and uh, I had a, a couple of buddies that played when I was little. Uh, I played when I was in high school, uh, never great. And then when I was about 30, I was getting kind of heavy, and I was starting to get uh, sent out on fat guy roles. I was auditioning. I was, I was going into auditions, and there was just rooms full of fat guys. But, and I wasn't quite there yet, but I was getting heavy. And at that point I said, I gotta do something because I, I'd have to gain 50 pounds to play a fat guy <laughs> and yet I'm not getting, you know. So anyway, golf was an avenue for me to exercise and lose weight and I caught the bug and for about a 20 year period I played 180 rounds of golf a year wow. on foot. Wow, and do you still play or? or no, I've had two artificial hips yeah, implanted and my right foot is falling apart. So at this oh, point, I've yeah. parked the golf. Right. I played after my first hip operation, but the second one, you know what? When you hit it like an old woman in leg chains, it's not fun. Right. And after my second hip replacement, it looked like I was an 87-year-old woman in leg chains trying to hit the golf ball. Yeah. And, and when you've played, it's just not. Right. You know, so I choose to do other things. Okay. Now, you've been in a number of films you know, ranging the gamut from, you know, infamous. I have never done porn. No, correct, true, true. <laughs> but actually, that's not complete. No, never. <laughs> now, what is the what is your favorite uh, prominent role you've ever had in a movie? Like your 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 favorite, where you got the the highest billing. Well, I I don't consider highest billing being important. I just right. think, given the opportunity with the material, how do you how well do you do it? I did a short with Michael Keaton that Michael Keaton directed mm -hmm. for the David Letterman Film Festival right. called But I'm Happy. And I played this wacky character and he, and, and he, we were friends. I mean, we had worked together, but he asked me to do this character. And I, I well, I did, I, it, was, it was good. Mm -hmm. uh, the day that I drove, the day I did the thing and I, I drove home, I felt so bad because it felt so empty. 
I felt like I had done such a poor job. And yet seeing it, I went, wow, boy, was I wrong. Which proves, you know, when you're acting, it's a, it's a terrible place to watch your performance. You got a million things going on in your head, and you got a bad, you can't see, and you're expecting to judge yourself. So anyway, it, 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 uh, that, the, the David Letterman Film Festival, that silly little thing was probably the thing I'm the most proud of. Right. Awesome. Well, Clint, it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's been a real honor to meet you. Well, thank you. I, I, listen, I enjoy being here. In fact, the reason why I was, I was in the Wraith was because of the David Letterman Film Festival, the thing that, that Michael Keaton did. The director saw it and hired me for oh, wow. the Wraith. So there you go. Absolutely. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, stay tuned for more coverage of the Chattanooga Film Festival 2016. Have a great night.